Are you serious? Are you serious? Something biblical's going on. Jesus is coming. What? Yes, yes, yes. Go to the Bible right now. Luke chapter 25. Excuse me. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. That is good coffee. All right. Here's what the Bible says. In Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Well, we've got some biblical scriptures fulfilling themselves. First of all, uh, on New Year's Eve, the Lord give me, during a, during a live broadcast, in the, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, out of my spirit came 12 prophecies for this year of 2013. I didn't even know what I said. The people watching the show had to type them up and email them back to me to know what it was was said. There were 12 of them. If you go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com, you can read. There's a whole page dedicated to it. It's called the 12 Prophecies of 2013. Just go there and read them. I printed it out this morning because the very first one was this. Three major solar flares. I even put the scripture, Luke 21, 25. Well, we had one on January the 3rd, 2013, on New Year's Day. We had a Class M solar flare. It was quite large. It was right out of the blocks. Well, folks, today we've had a second Class M solar flare. Uh, reports are coming in that, um, let, me, let me find it exactly here. I've got several information here. Yes. A possible earth-directed CME, a magnetic filament snaking around the sunspot AR-1692 erupted today on March the 15th, 2013, at about 600 UT. The slow explosion, which took hours to unfold, produced an M1 class solar flare and a bright CME, S-O-H-O, -O, or the Solar and Hellospheric Observatory, captured the CME just as it was leaving the sun. The central location of the explosion combined with the multiple views of the CME show the SOHO and NASA's twin stereo spacecraft suggest that the cloud is heading almost directly toward the Earth. If so, an impact would likely occur in two to three days, setting the stage for a weekend of auroras. Stay, stay tuned for refined estimates of the arrival time. So this has just been released, and I want to thank, uh, let me just, give me one second, because I want to give credit to the person that sent this to me just a moment ago. Um, uh, forgive me for that. Joshua. I want to thank Joshua for sending this to me. Now, it also, in this article that I'm reading here, and I'll put the link below, it also talks about the comet, the pan comet. Um, it talks about uh, what other things going on in space but the magnitude of the comet pan stars and some of the other uh, things that's taking place in the stars and in the sky. But certainly we've had our second M1 class solar flare and the prophecy the Lord gave us was there would be three significant solar flares. This one, if it is a direct hit with the size that it is, it will cause considerable auroras to be seen, and maybe some disruptions, folks, in telecommunications, satellites, electric grids, what have you. We don't know, 
but it is a big one, and it looks as if it's directed straight toward us. So keep an eye on that. Now, while that's going on, President Obama decided to speak on the Iranian crisis. And Obama made this comment. Washington, D.C. believes that Iran is more than a year or so away from developing a nuclear weapon. President Barack Obama said this ahead of his visit to Israel. So he's downplaying the need to come up with a plan how to stop them. Because if you remember, Obama's going to see Benjamin Netanyahu. And he said, I want this to be more of a visit. I don't want it to be just a photo op. I want a detailed plan on when you're going to get your people, the Jewish people, out of the settlements in the West Bank. I want a detailed plan. That's what Obama said. And Netanyahu responded the next day with, well, I want a detailed plan when you're going to get Iran out of the nuclear weapon business. I want a detailed plan. Well, now Obama is saying, look, I think Iran's a year or so away. So he's defusing, or he's trying to take away the ammunition, if you will, uh, of the position, the strength position that Benjamin Netanyahu is positioning for negotiations of a seven-year peace agreement. Obama, make no mistake about it, Obama is going to try to structure a seven-year peace and safety agreement. Matter of fact, the logo that they're using for his trip, called the Obama-Israeli trip 2013, is Unbreakable Alliance, and then there's a half a flag of America, half a flag of Israel, and then down below, in, in, Hebrew, in Hebrew, is the phrase, a covenant with many peoples. He's trying to confirm the covenant, as the Bible says in Daniel 9, 27. So there is distress of nations with perplexity or confusion, which is what Luke 21, 25 is saying when it says there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity or confusion and the sea and the waves roaring. Now, Obama goes on to say, obviously, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who will meet with Obama in Jerusalem this coming up Wednesday, the 20th of March, told the United Nations in September that Israel believed Iran would be closer to nuclear weapon capacity in the spring or summer of this year, 2013. Obviously, we don't want to cut it, to cut it too close, said Obama in an interview. So when I'm consulting with Bibi, he says, or Benjamin Netanyahu's proper nickname, when I'm uh, speaking with Prime Minister Netanyahu, as I have over the last several years on this issue, my message to him will be the same as before. If we can resolve this diplomatically, that is more lasting solution. But if not, I will continue to keep all options on the table. When asked if he would order an attack on Iran if the diplomatic means failed, Obama said, when I say all options are on the table, all options are on the table. And the United States obviously has significant capacities and capabilities. Now, he said that Washington's goal was to ensure that Iran does not process and ever possess a nuclear weapon that could threaten Israel or trigger an arms race in the region that would be extremely dangerous. Netanyahu, who repeated yesterday on March 14, 2013, he was impatient with Washington's Iran strategy, says that a nuclear-armed Iran is, an, is a constant threat to Israel, and Iran has denied the Holocaust and has called for Israel's destruction. So, there you have it. We have signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. This is why men's hearts are failing them, because of the things that are coming upon the earth. Are you saved? Do you know what's coming? Do you realize the devastation, the destruction? It's time to give your life to Jesus Christ. Now, you need to repent of your sins and call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, he whosoever calleth, upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So repent, send me a personal message. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. We'll help you. 
in Jesus' name.